Hi, how are you everyone? My name is Marla and I am a commitment to helping 1 million women love their skin so they can experience joy and authenticity in all areas of their life. And I am so excited today to be going love with Belinda Hughes who just jumped on. So I will see if I can bring her on with me. Um, just a minute. Hi. Hello, beautiful. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. So, really good. Thank you so yeah. much for, for inviting me on. Oh, thank you for joining me. I'm so happy we've finally been able to do this. Um, yeah, it's amazing and I'm really, really excited to chat with you tonight. Um, yeah, body wisdom is such a beautiful topic. It is. It really, really is. For, for those of you who don't know me, my name's Belinda Hughes. I'm a mind, body, nutrition coach um, and have a particular passion in supporting women. So supporting women to, to use their voice, to um, tap into their, their body wisdom and to powerfully step into their, their gifts. So it's definitely it's a huge, huge passion of mine. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, yeah, and so what what brought you here to this path and, like, into body wisdom because it's you know like it's, it's amazing I'd love love to know a little bit yeah absolutely I guess my um my journey started at the beginning of of last year so it's very fitting that we're we're at the start of a new year again mm. um at the start of last year I got sick six times within a, a couple of months so pretty quickly at the the start of the year and I was uh, I had so many messages that were were coming in, but I was pushing them away and um, just fighting through what it was, like the, the illness that I, I had at the time. Um, mm -hmm. And it wasn't until the, the sixth time that I got sick and I was laid up in bed for like a, a decent four to five days and I was like, okay, I need to stop and I need to, I need to allow those messages to come in and I need to um, respond to, to what is happening um, and where I'm being called to, to be. And for me at the time, it was a, a, a lot of resistance in terms of transition from a, a career perspective as well. So moving away from um, my physio profession and stepping into the, the coaching world as well. So I had so many limiting beliefs about moving into that world. And I had so many little bits and pieces that I was attached to from a physio perspective as well. Because I was went to university for four years. I've been doing it for 12 years. Um, yeah. And it's a great profession and a steady income. And... There was so much resistance and, and fear with moving to the, the next path. And because I was fighting it so much, my body finally gave in and was like, hey, this is, you need to start listening. But I, I'd love to hear what was the, the journey for you? What made you step into a coaching and looking at body wisdom? Um, yeah, well, for me, I really just, like, I, I went on a bit of a spiritual path. Like, oh, I don't even know what year it was about. 2011 was the start and the first book that I ever read on spirituality was You Can Heal Your Life by Louise Hay and that just like really resonated with me um and then I had a coach who worked in um ontological coaching which is a style that I studied and I loved I loved it and so I just jumped into that and um it's changed it's just changed my life so much for me to really see how like how much of an impact your body actually has um, in your way of being and how you show up in the world. And so I just, yeah, it just, it kind of just evolved naturally. Like I just felt, almost fell into it without even realising, but it's been just so powerful. Um, yeah, it's amazing. And I guess um, because I've experienced like a skin condition as well, which was a real journey of self-love and um figuring out like self-acceptance and what it meant for who I was and going back to like thoughts become things and thinking about like Louise Hayes with them as well and looking at my language and and how I was speaking to myself and the stories I was telling myself and how they were showing up as emotions and then manifesting in my body and um yeah so it's it's been really, really profound for me, a big thing, yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. And it's fascinating, isn't it, that our, our body can hold on to things while our mind isn't ready to conceive or process what, what's happened. And our body holds on to energy and feelings that, that our minds can't conceive as well. So it's, mm. yeah, it's definitely a, a fascinating world. And it's um, something that we can tap into or it's something that we can push away and completely block or be completely absent to as well. Mm, yeah. And so... Like, I'd love to know, like, what, what to you in a nutshell, like, is body wisdom? Like, what does it mean to you for people who don't really, may not really know about that stuff? Yeah, body wisdom to me is the, the body picking up. Um, so it can be just a, a simple social experience that you're connected with somebody and you might have something that, that manifests within your body. So it might be having a conversation with someone and feeling a block within your throat and might be... Um, having a really busy day and not giving yourself that that time or stepping into self-care and feeling that that tightness within your chest so it's basically energy being stored within the body that's not because we're we're not tapping into it we're not listening to the messages the energy gets stored instead of being being released um, mm-hmm. definitely from I guess from a human perspective as well like we're we're engineered to be in a, a space that our bodies and minds keep us safe so so with the messages and with the energy that we hold on to there's a, a couple of ways that we can read into it as well because some of it can be energy that we're storing because of fear when we're stepping into something new um so often we can misread that and it can throw us off our path um or it can be something that that's coming in like when you first meet somebody and sometimes you get that like intuitive hit that my god this person is I feel like I'm instantly connected to them or it can be the opposite too of like, I don't know what it is, but I know I need to remove myself from this person. So it's just the, the energy that, that our body, body holds. But I'd love to hear like equally your interpretation as well. Yeah. So for me, it's like, it's, it's similar. Like, you know, um, for me, it's really, um, like, um, interweaving of language body and emotions and looking at how like they almost like a domino effect onto each other so you have your language and these stories or assessments that you make up about yourself or tell yourself um and then like your frame of reference so like your context for how you see the world that then shapes your emotions so you're living in certain emotions, certain emotions and certain moods and like there are the main moods that you could live in like you could be living in resentment and how you carry resentment in your body is like there are certain different postures, postures and like somatic ways of carrying yourself in your body that um, are determined by that mood and so shifting like from like resentment to like acceptance for example um it's not just an emotional response, it's a big bodily response. And so it's shifting your like actual physical posture and um, like moving in a different way and bringing awareness to that. And um, yeah, it can, it's, it's really powerful. And sometimes it can see, seem so simple, but like hunting over and like shifting to like upward position, like it can change your total mood. So that, that's my interpretation of it. Yeah, absolutely. and it is, it's incredible when we change our physiology, how much that can impact our energy and just our overall emotions and how we feel as well. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. What would be like a, a great example? Like, is there, is there anything that stands out for you in terms of um, a message that you received through your, your body wisdom? Maybe something that you haven't acknowledged to start with or is taking you a little bit of time and, um, and what you've done from that? Um, yeah, well, I mean, an example for me was really like, um, in the past having like a, a kind of emotionally stressful relationship with the person in my life. And like, for me, (coughs) I, I was suppressing the emotions in such a like big way and feeling numb to it that I didn't actually realize that I was holding, having these emotions or experiencing them that my body reacted for me and I physically was vomiting for um, no reason. And so it was it was really interesting for me 
to like and I couldn't control it it was just like I felt numb and I felt no emotions but my body was reacting and responding and it's like pushing the energy outwards to make me look at what was happening and from there I had to um like really bring awareness to what was going on and feel into like what what was triggering it and the problems in the relationship and um setting boundaries and it, it went back to really digging into like um yeah, setting clear boundaries for myself and stepping away from that relationship for a while. And then to set the boundaries, I had I went back to my posture and the way I carried myself and realised that I had been carrying my, um, the emotions of like, and, and the like feelings of not feeling confident, not feeling enough, not feeling strong in this relationship and like shrinking down. And I used to, I actually used to, cover my throat a lot because it was like I didn't want to have a voice so I would like hunch over and I would be like this and diving into this I realized that and I was able to really um like start playing around with like opening up my throat opening up my chest taking like my um yeah physically taking my hands because I used to sit like this a lot like physically and it was like a protection thing because I was scared of speaking my truth um and so being able to shift that and open up open up to it and start like bringing awareness to it because awareness is really in from my experience in the first step um it, it changed everything and I was able to then like start like standing in my power and owning like my values and my truth and realize what what my values were what my standards were for myself and move forward to that and make more powerful like requests like it goes back to like communication as well like it's it's the, it's one of the foundational parts of everything like the three just interweave like so much um so yeah that's that was like a really big experience for me and um yeah it was really powerful going through that yeah, that's um, incredibly powerful. Incredibly, like just the like your body responding through vomiting, like that must have been such an unnerving experience to have to start with, and the whole like blocking your throat because your body so desperately wanted to to talk, and you like your body wanted to use your your voice, but it was that holding back, which yeah, it's incredible. Yeah, and yeah. I definitely agree. Like awareness is the the first step. Like awareness, and then removing judgment too, as the mm -hmm the next piece just acknowledging what is there and removing all all judgment in relation to what's actually physically happening within your your body as well mm. yeah yeah and like um so what would be like your experience of that like how have you like experienced this for yourself and moved through it and like what tools kind of have you used to shift shift things powerfully for yourself and for your clients. Yeah. Oh. yeah, one of the, I guess one of the biggest blocks personally for, for myself and one that I feel with my clients as well is that the use of my, my voice and particularly as a as a mother, um, that's definitely been a, a big one for me and a lot of conversations where I felt that, like that block in my throat or that tightness like across my, my chest and that, that tension. Um, and it can just be in, um, I remember in the, in the initial stages of stepping into motherhood, it was, a lot of conversations of trying to regain some of my, my independence. And like, I, I guess there was a, a lot of anger and a lot of resentment, which created that, that block as well. Cause I really wanted to communicate in a more elegant and graceful way as compared to just allowing that sort of, um, that crazy emotion that, that I was holding. And the, the only way that I could sort of release that, that feeling, that tension was to, to sit down and to, to have an open conversation um and that was the easiest way to to voice it but also like from a, a physical perspective just having that awareness of what was happening with my my breathing during those times as well because I like was getting shorter and sharper with my breathing because I was so caught in my head like it though and I still catch myself doing it we had visitors here over the last four to five days and I get caught in looking after 
everybody else and often forget about myself during the, the process. I'm getting called to do this, that and everything else. And I can feel my chest tighten because I'm trying to just do instead of instead of be. And in those those situations, same thing again, like stopping really consciously, um, reflecting on what I'm doing from a breathing perspective, allowing myself the space to sit down, just excusing myself. Um, making sure that I get back into those nice deep belly breaths again um, and just mm. have those those conversations if I just need some time out or that conversation um, about whatever's coming up for me in that, that moment. Mm, yeah, and it's so interesting, the breath. Like, breath is just so powerful. And I find, like, I really, like, as a mum too, like, I find, you know, my... My, where my toddler gets really stressed out and stuff and, you know, he's a toddler, they do that. Like, we we get him to breathe, literally. Like, we, because I meditate all the time and my partner does too, so we've, like, taught him to, like, breathe through it. And, it, like, seeing it in a child who is so, like, innocent and stuff and just, like, open to curiosity and stuff, seeing them, like, go into this, like, and really take on, like, the breathing, actually, like, embodying it, it's so amazing. And you can see him shift. Like, I see him shift. He'll shift from, like, total anxiety, crying, to, like, I'm calm. And he'll tell me, I'm calm now, Mum. And it's, like, it's amazing. Yeah. Um, it's so incredible. Yeah. It's so, so amazing to be able to gift onto your child as well. Mm, yeah. yeah. We had a similar situation here the other day with Alex got, unfortunately, got stung by a, a blue bottle oh, down on the beach yeah, yeah. and, like, it was hysterical and screaming and I kept on reminding him to, to breathe through the process and at least it would give him, like, a, a little bit of a reprieve in between, like, the, the screams and it does. Just that that conscious awareness and bringing it back um, and creating that, that embodiment does make such a, such a significant difference. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Wow. And what, yeah. um, and what, oh, sorry, what would you say? Um, what would you say for, I'm sure you've had experience with, with clients where people um, feel certain things and they're, they're finding it difficult to tap into their, their body wisdom or somebody that hasn't been able to tap into it for quite a long period of time. What, what, like, are there certain things that you would see in, in that population of people? Um, well, if people aren't, like, aware of that, like, I, I often will get people to, like, while, while we're in a coaching call, like, tune in, like, close their eyes and literally feel, like, whatever emotion they have been experiencing, like, feel that, like, and feel how that emotion feels in their body and then, like, play so like play with the emotion they want to feel and how they imagine that would feel and like dance between the two like shift between the two like consciously in that moment like and see if they can notice the difference of how it shows up in their body for them um yeah that's one thing that I found really useful um and another thing like that I I find that seems a bit more general but like literally just if someone's, like, feeling, like, heavy and depressed and, or, like, you know, low, not low energy and, like, tired in their body to to just move or, like, dance. You know, music and dance and, like, shift the energy because when you shake it off or you dance or you, like, run or, you, like, you're sitting down and you just stand up and do some star jumps, it changes. Like, it can really shift the mood in, like, an instant, you know, like, it's a quick easy thing that anyone can do. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I find that really useful. Um, and I, yeah, we sorry. I just noticed, like, we have, like, a few comments. Marsha was saying that, like, she really needed to hear this and it's, like, a great reminder. And, yeah, it's an energy and it is. It's just, it's all energy. So I totally agree with that. And, um, Fran, Fran said that if she doesn't exercise, she becomes really grumpy and stressed out with the kids um, and anxious at work. And, yeah, I noticed that too. I, I don't know what your 
your thoughts are on that. Yeah, I am, yeah, I'm exactly the same. Exercise has helped to destabilize me so much. I find it, it's really therapeutic for me, especially from a, a mind perspective. And I do find during that process as well, I'm able to release a lot of energy during during that movement as well. And it's like it changes and it ebbs and flows. And I, I really listen to my body each day as to what I feel that I need in that, that time and, and moment. Because I, I think I used to get stuck a couple of years ago. Like I used to get stuck and I need to do this. And I only do certain types of exercise. And now I listen and, and allow whatever's there to flow in as to, okay, today is a relaxation and yoga day. Um, mm. Tomorrow I'll step into to Pilates bar. The next day I might go surfing. The next day I might go for a run. So it's a, a little bit different. Mm. And trusting yeah, that's so important. Like I feel like when you you put the, that language on on you as well. Like, I need to do this. I should do this. It creates stress and it creates pressure and resistance. And so, like, that kind of movement isn't going to, personally, from my perspective, isn't going to have the same effect. Yeah. Um, and, like, can actually manifest more stress. Like, for me, I, I noticed the more pressure I put on myself on what I was going to eat for, like, my... Um, my skin and stuff, the more stressed I got. And I I feel very sure that that created more, like, skin problems. Like, it, I was so stressed about it that I got really worried. And now I've relaxed about it and I'm really just being with what it is and accepting it and, like, really slowed and I'm not really noticing, like, and I'm like my relationship to it has changed, and I like love it for what it is. You know? Yeah, um, yeah. And that's interesting too, because that's a, a completely other like it. It is body wisdom too, and it's just tapping into a, another aspect of, uh -huh. of body wisdom, which is yeah, which is really really fascinating. And one of the things uh, that I really tapped into and use, and especially when I go out for breakfast or to restaurants or um whatever else is to really utilize that that gut gut wisdom and looking at sort of items on the menu it's interesting i don't know if you ever tried this but it's interesting to have a look at things and to think about what it would actually physically taste like to swallow while you're thinking as well to see how your gut actually reacts to it um to know how you're going to feel afterwards as well so that's mm. something that'll do when I'm sitting down because it gives me a cue as to what my body actually physically needs here and now and and in this moment as compared to going with my headspace and my desire that's so interesting um I have never tried that but it's it's funny um I think it was Melissa Ambrosini was saying like she she's got you know really health conscious like strict with food and that sort of thing and um because she in the past had a lot of health issues with eating like you know sugar and chocolate and cake and that sort of thing and so she removed gluten and everything and then one night like she like ate this like this chocolate cake and it really like um she felt really stressed about it and really really guilty and stuff and it manifested like she felt really sick and like it react reacted in her body and stuff and then the next year she went to the same place and was like decided that she was going to order chocolate cake guilt-free and not, like, put those negative, like, intentions or thoughts behind how she ate it and she just enjoyed it and, like, savoured it and was really grateful that she got to treat herself and, like, experience it. And she had no reaction. She didn't. Yeah. And, like, yeah. It's, it it's amazing. And, yeah, and it's interesting too because they um, – I know that there's research coming out as well that it's not about what it is that you're eating. It's like who you are when you're eating, which exactly feeds into mm -hmm. what you're talking about. Like if you're stressed and if you're feeling guilt um, when you're eating chocolate cake, what's going to like your body will react to it in a completely different way. And then with all the enzymatic processes and everything to break it down, you're more likely to get inflamed. You're more likely to flush a lot of it out and not absorb um, a lot of the, the nourishment from it. Whereas if you're in a relaxed state, you're going to take more away from the cake. It will be settled in your gut. Um, it's just like it sets our physiology up in such a completely different way, which is, is super, super fascinating. But so nice too that when you are indulging and when you're enjoying something, because pleasure is such an important part of our life as well, 
that we need to take the, the guilt away from it and just enjoy it for what it is and enjoy the, the moment. Yeah. yeah, I I yeah, I love that and I totally agree. I think it's it's really important to be able to treat yourself sometimes and do it from a positive empowering place that because that's yeah. self love too, you know, like um, yeah. which is another topic, but you know, I love self love. <laughs> yeah. Um and I think it all ties in really. Um yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Is, um is if- if anybody's sitting out there and they haven't stepped into sort of any work like tapping into their their body wisdom are there any sort of pointers um that you can give people as to to where to start anything that's really worked for you or or for your clients you know i honestly feel like it's about keeping it really simple to and like starting with really just bringing awareness to it and noticing how your body feels in different circumstances like when you're angry how how where are you feeling it in your body how is what is your posture like when you're happy and like playing with that like I just think that itself is really powerful um and like you can you can do like things of like standing in other people's shoes so you like imagine like how someone else would be feeling in a situation like say say you're feeling a conflict emotionally with someone like physically like stand up and pretend to be them and imagine like feeling it from their perspective in their body like how they would feel it and then go to you and like shift between that it's like it's a game and it's like it can seem really silly to do that at times but it's it's powerful because you can it starts you Tune, getting to tune in to your body and how what possibly other people are feeling and being able to shift it. Yeah, so mm. that's what my feeling would be. How about yeah. you? Um, I definitely say like awareness absolutely is the, the first step as well. Um, and journaling has been something that, that's been really, really beneficial for, for myself and clients as well in terms of um, – journaling without any intention so sitting down and freely freely writing because a lot of people when they sit down to journal think about what they need to write whereas it uh, for me personally it's just that that free flowing um and just just that awareness during the day of what your actual what your body is feeling um mm. always been something that that has always helped to, to stabilize me but there's all i've always had certain points in my body where I feel tension and it tends to be in those those busier times or the most the, the more stressful times when I feel um that it that energy within my body so just bringing awareness to what it is that happens like what's happened during the day um bringing it to the present mind and then creating an action from that as yeah. well to be able to help shift and, and clear because uh, I find with all of the energy that, that gets suppressed over time, it can, over time, like, manifest as anger or resentment or um, it can become something much bigger than what it needs to be just because we aren't clearing that energy on a, a day-to-day basis. Yeah. Actually, um, I just saw as well of another thing that I don't know if you know Yana Faye, but she um, is really does a lot of stuff with the body and and one thing she like talks about is um asking your body like asking different your parts of your body what they want to say to you and just listening and seeing what what comes through and I love that I just think it's so beautiful um yeah and you can do that yeah Yeah, I guess you can yeah so um, I've only done a tiny bit of that. It's something I definitely am open to, like exploring more and seeing what happens. But I think it's a really, really great thing to try. Um, yeah. Is there anything else that you want to add or feel that's really relevant to share? Um, from I feel like we we've covered. I think we've covered quite a, a bit of ground in terms of um, circling around around body wisdom. I know that you have an exciting program that's about the, that you've actually got kickstarted. Would you like to 
to step into that and share? Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. So I do one-on-one coaching with people, which um, is like three, six month packages. But yeah, my new thing that I just like, um, I just came like through like on Christmas Eve, who's so really new and I just kind of went with it. It's a monthly membership. It's called Love Your Soul Sisterhood. And uh, every month there's a different theme and we just dive into like group coaching, different content books and like, um, yeah, it's amazing, and there's some really powerhouse women in there. Really incredible. Like, it's just a really sacred space for like women to connect and share vulnerably and openly. Um, yeah, and so like, if anyone wants to join, I would love to have them in there. Um, I'll put the link in the comments. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm up to. And yeah, how about you? What what are you what are you offering to the world? Your program sounds incredible. I uh, at the at the moment I'm currently offering one on one coaching. So I have a, a couple of I have two more spaces available at the moment, and I have a, a brand new program specifically designed for mums starting at the the start of March. So I will be be popping up some information about that. Um, if you're interested, um, click on my Facebook page. You can friend me or follow me, uh, and the, the information will follow. Sh- very shortly, so I'm super, super excited. It will be a, a six-week program, um, and diving into a lot of it is a, a, a deep passion um, as to my own personal experience through through my motherhood journey and what I've seen over the years um, through through quite a few of my friends, through my my mum as well, um, and other mums that I've shared time with as well. So I'm really, really excited to to open this one up. Wow, it sounds amazing. Like, yeah, I'm really, really needed. So I think, um, yeah, so many people get so much value for that. So exciting. I'm so excited for you. Um, And, yeah, if this resonates with anyone, we'd love, like, for you guys, like, to share it with anyone that, that may resonate because I think it's a really, really important topic and a really valuable one with that um can change your life, like, I've experienced massive changes from um, tuning into this stuff. So, yeah, and um, thanks, Eliza, for, like, jumping on and for Martha and everyone else who's jumped on. We really appreciate you being on here. Um, And thank you so much for being here, beautiful. I love chatting to you. It's been really amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you for inviting me on. It's been it's such a pleasure sharing this space with you and, and to learn from your experience as well, which has been phenomenal. So thank you so yeah. much. No, thank you. And, um, yeah, I will chat to you very soon. We'll have to do another live. It's very soon again. Absolutely beautiful. Have a great Bye. day. You Bye. Too. Bye.